All right, folks. It took a while to get here, but we finally are in game. But I think I've got sounds muted. Maybe let me just check these things real quick. No, they're just a bit low. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Oh wait, music was off. There you go. Um, but yeah, it's a brand new best of five for the I am Katowice main event, round of thirty-two. And keep in mind, every single one of these best of fives is basically <clears throat> worth six thousand dollars. Because you get, you walk away with nothing in the round of 32. You walk away with at least 6,000 in the round of 16. Jay Mui coming to chat, but without an... Whoa, Jay Mui trying to ace Kate with no badge. Jay Mui. Ooh. Damn, son. I never thought I could be hurt. Awkward. Like this. No, I'm just kidding. We love you, man. Uh, getting into game, though. He is a Chinese player. I can talk a little bit about him. In the bottom left, it's Jigua. Watermelon. In the top right, as the blue Zerg, he is Violet. Now, Jigua, I've saw a little bit of when we did the Easter Team Strike Up cast, but again, being one of the Chinese players in the circuit, you're not really going to see him popping up in weekly cups or um, <laughs> things like this. And I, 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 I remember him being a pretty good player. I remember back in Hots, even going further, him versus Beastie in the beta tournament for uh, Hots being pretty good, but. I, again, we haven't seen Jigua really in a while, so I, I have no clue how he's doing right now. Did you know that Jigua means Ohana? And Ohana means family? What? No, Jigua means watermelon. What are you talking about? Ohana means family. Yeah, but this isn't Ohana. Nothing here points to Ohana. I don't mind going up on side tangents with you, but that makes no sense. Damn you, Lushkin. <laughs> Actually, knowing what Jigaw means for one. Uh, but Violet, as I was trying to get into <laughs> before somebody was trying to sabotage my excellent speech. Sorry. Uh, we actually saw him versus Hydra just recently on the <laughs> latter um, WCS tournament. And while he lost pretty badly to Hydra, he didn't look bad at all while doing it. No, not bad. Um, just, you know, never going to re retake that mantle of best North American Korean Zerg. Very specific mantle. I was going to say, that is the <laughs> that is a quite <laughs> specific title. Did you know that Wiskin means vampire? No, it means star. <laughs> That's I'm a not star, what it means. <laughs> we all know what it means. Wiskin actually uh, stands for excellence. A lot of people don't know that. Mm. Actually, what I hate. Okay, so real tiger since being silly. Uh, my middle name is Hiroshi. Real. Oh, since you're being silly. Uh huh. And in Japanese, apparently, that's like roughly translates to like smart one or something. And sure. In no point in my life have I ever felt like that was an appropriate middle name. For me. <laughs> Maybe it was actually translated to smart ass one, which that would be perfect. Ah, uh, that would actually make more <laughs> sense to be completely honest with you, because I am a snarky, mouthy. Little bastard. <laughs> uh, those lings went uh, around the world to take care of that one ling. I don't think it was worth it. No. <laughs> off, please. This guy's got two kills while this went on. Yeah. What a boss. Uh, now, Zigua did go ahead and triple hatch before pool. So he's he's fine. He's fine on the income. In fact, yeah, pretty damn Violet, good. Yeah, as you say, Violet's actually behind as he drones, drones, drones here, and Shigua moves on towards Lair, so certainly has the income set up to possibly go Mutas, which I really feel like all roads lead to Mutas right now when it comes to ZVZ. Not to say that it is like the best soul strategy, but uh, there's not a lot of better ways to deal with them. Now, in this instance, we don't have enough gas, so I can't say Shigua is actually heading that direction, but he's still got time to turn on Geyser 3 and 4 if you'd like. Still a while before they can decide to go for a uh, Spire. Yeah, it's a very passive game on Dusk Towers. What else is new? <sighs> both getting Lair, both going for Roaches for now. And uh, it's too bad we don't really know more about our Chinese player, because uh, we can talk all day about Violet, I suppose. But well, Chinese players, they usually come with their own style. Um, certainly, you know, the different regions, especially with Korea being kind of pushed to the side for now, uh, do have different styles. But it's like China is seriously like so just 
on its own. <laughs> well, there's <laughs> it's, actually uh... there's a couple of very good reasons for that, though. And one of them is uh, right off the bat, if you guys have ever looked at the launcher, when you go to launch your server for what region of StarCraft you want to play, there is no China region. And they don't play on Korea. Their lag to Korea is about as bad as their lag to North America because China actually has pretty terrible internet, just generally speaking. And uh, most of them have to like go behind VPN, VPNs if they want to do anything. But anyways, these points aside, like they are, despite this huge country in their own little world, because they can't really easily play on the other servers. And casters who want to cast Chinese events usually have to be given clean feeds because you cannot easily access. You kind of have to like hack your way onto the Chinese server, more or less. <laughs> the IAM channel crashed again. No. Oh. Well, zombie up. I haven't seen any other streams crash, so I don't know why. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> That's unfortunate, and hopefully they'll get that back up soon. But uh, for anyone who might be just tuning in because you're StarCraft addicts, you did just in the right time. Because uh, Shigua decides to get really violent and sends a lot of links across the map. And Violet actually has a bit of trouble cleaning that up. Uh, does, but at the cost of nine workers. Now he's marching across the map, and this is going to be one of those things that hits before mutas are out. But luckily for Jigua, he did get the spine crawlers down. But this forest of spine crawlers is going to have a lot of roaches to fight against. He might just walk past them and go up to the main. Probably the smartest option, in my opinion. Queen is attacking her own hatchery instead of injecting, which means she's also not auto attacking the roaches. I'm not sure what's up with that, but looks like he won't actually get too much done. He will snipe off the spire, and that's kind of cool, but I don't know how much that's really going to buy for him. This is Jay Mui coming in, by the way, trying to get some clothes on. Thank you for the two-month resub, man. Coming back. Woo! Yeah. Um, yeah, that was a pretty good defense. You know, the spine crawlers forced Violet to move around them. He didn't really have that many uh, roaches to begin with, and the Mutas really came in and cleaned everything up. Ziga is going to go into the Baneling Nests and another Spire? Well. So, reinvesting the Spire isn't a bad idea, in my opinion. Uh, we've seen just how bad uh, mutas can snowball, and if this was a situation where Violet had been going for his own mutas, this would especially be nece a necessity. But that's not the case. He's actually gone for infestors. He's trying to get fungal growth, and he wants to catch the mutas rather than let them snowball. Yeah. The uh, spore crawler is going to be able to buy some time, but man, I can't believe he's going for a double spire. Um, really looking towards the late game then. I mean, investing that many more... That much more minerals and gas into a, a second spire and, of course, a second upgrade will actually uh, kind of slow down the snowball just the tiniest bit for maybe Violet to actually catch Wait. a breath here and get to Infestors. Wait, what are you talking about? Dude, he had a... He was building a spire. Yeah, he built one. Why would you... He's not doing double upgrades. That's what I'm asking. Like, what do you mean? What? Wait, did, did Violet snipe the other spire? Yes, that was a big point. Were you still playing <laughs> fucking Kirby or something? That's the whole point of the roach attack. That's the reason oh. I brought up like the time he's buying for himself. Oh, I'm so dumb. <laughs> oh my god, there's not a lot of times. Like, okay, whatever. It's good. It's good. We move on. It's no problem. Uh, so I I thought I had missed something, which is why I'm like freaking out about this because I was like, no wait, what the fuck did I yeah, miss? <laughs> But okay, so the Roach is oh. falling back. Uh, I mean, the fungal growth catches a lot of the mutas. This is fantastic. You're going to need a couple to lock it down. But the queens need to be shooting the mutas, not walking around doing willy-nilly nothing at all. So it takes off a couple of the mutas. Not too bad. Meanwhile, a couple of roaches did still manage to sneak out. Jigua had eyes on this with the overseers, and he think he, I think he may have thought that he caught them all. But the idea is that if you get a couple of these to each of the mineral lines, they'll do some significant damage. And of course, as we can see right now, the uh, overseers got vision on them, so they're not going to get that much done. I do like the, the Roach Burrow tactics, but uh, Violet not getting... Oh, wait a minute. The Mutas actually go back before defending this fourth base. And the Spine Colors actually being repositioned are going to help out in more than just the defense against the Roach attack. Uh, the Hydralisk are on the way now for Violet. He's got those Infestors, uh, but... Uh, oh, so does... Well, this actually might be for a Hive. Uh, a Roach does uh... see this. One lonely Roach. Yeah, he may also just, as funny as it is, one or two of his own infestors wouldn't be too bad. Not for uh, anything more than, say, like sneak attacks and run bys with, like, infested Terrans. But the Mutas, of course, can be the main focus for killing anything. Still, that count is so high on 26. Now, before, when you got the fungal growths off, of course, Violent only had queens in range and queens out to fight with. Now that he's got those Hydras out, if a fungal lands, a lot of Mutas will die. 
That is going to be for a hive. Uh, he's got the melee upgrades on the way. So ultras, I can imagine another choice here. Now Roach Hydra and Fester, especially if you can get up to Lurkers. Actually, if you get up to Lurkers, it's not so bad. But before you can get up to Lurkers, Mass Ultras will be able to dominate. That's only if, of course, you can get up to Mass Ultras. They're both on even bases. And actually, Violet's the one with more Mineral Bank. Hmm. Well, Spore Crawlers take out, uh, like, one of the Mutas. <laughs> and this is going to just force Violet into a base trade by the looks of it. Now, he does a burrow, and I'm surprised, I guess there's an overseer here, but still maybe saves one or two units, opposed to just letting them all die. But uh, as we come into this fight, there are going to be a lot of banelings. They've got speed. If the fungal growths land, they'll kill the banelings, but if they miss, the hydras will certainly go down. So first uh, fungal's not so good, second fungal not so good. Hydras, of course, there's oh, a good Jesus. fungal right there, but hydras uh, still go down pretty, pretty fast. And the problem is you still have to deal with the mutas on the return. So, Violet's actually not in such a great spot despite taking that fight pretty decently. He's got 18 Hydras. Not all of them are here on the front lines. Another Banley hit connects off, and there's only about six Hydras left at this point. Ling's surround, Mutus will kill, and Violet, he lost way more for this fight. Like, this is not going to go his way. Loses the Infestors, too, which are burrowing, trying to escape. Roach is burrowing, trying to escape. Shigua has got this game on lockdown. Ah, uh, Violet's gonna try and do something with a lot more Infestors. I guess he had a bit of a gas bank. Well, he had a bit of everything bank. So, going for the Infestors, totally Infestors. Could start Burrow Tactics. Uh, try and just throw down Infested Terrans everywhere. He did kill at 4th base, so... Maybe, maybe keeping those Ultras off could, uh... Bring him back into this game. Jigal only has a 20 army supply lead right now, but it's in things that you just can't kill with Roaches. <laughs> so the Hydra's doing their best, but the Infestors... A little late on pop, and they do not have those uh, pathogen glands either, so they're not even too useful right now. Ultralis Cavern. Hmm. So, let's assume for a moment that the mutas somehow got fungled into a magical ball of death and the uh, Hydras took them out. Violet's still not in such a great spot. He's got his drone count back up, but because he's not been able to make any army... But let's say in that perfect world you remove all the mutas from the equation. The Ultras are gonna stop everything else because Violet doesn't actually have a Lurker Cavern, I don't think. No, it's still a Hydralis Den. So without the Lurker Dan out in play, there's not going to be anything that does enough damage to the Ultras. So there's five Ultras coming into Jigua. He's got Kagnus Plating coming up too. And Violet's going to be hitting with really low damage units. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you could uh, reduce that count to maybe one or two Ultras. I mean, like, Violet still has an army, but six Ultras. They're going to have 2-1, not too impressive, but the, more important, they're going to have plating. And Ling supports. Uh, Jigua goes for the five bases, so the ta retakes that fourth as his fifth. And Violet is still not giving up on the game. But once you see the Ultras, it's probably tap out time. Yeah, <clears throat> the lack of tech for Violet, I mean, if he had his own um, hive here, maybe he could do something with his own ultras, for instance. He actually doesn't have a spire, so he wouldn't be able to go up to a greater spire. Um, but he would have, <clears throat> I mean, he, the, at least that would have been something with a timer that he was shooting for. Right now he's just shooting for like a maxed out army that's just not going to compare it to a maxed out army. Of Jigua, unless he gets like a really abusive position, I guess with like a choke or something like that. I mean, but these are gonna see the ultras. And, and unfortunately, we've seen there's only there's two ways to deal with ultras, and that's either with your own ultras or with a combination of lurkers and Sim City. And unfortunately, Violet, who had a bunch of spore colors earlier, has since spread them out to deal with the mutas better. And doing so, doesn't really have anywhere to hide behind from the ultralisk attack. And let's not forget, still, all these banelings are gonna be a big problem for these hydras. Now, in fairness, Hydras are better than Marines when it comes to shooting Ultras. They will actually deal damage to them. 14 damage versus 6 armor is still going to be a heavy reduction nonetheless. Uh, Fungals go off, and he's looking to surround this. Just walks in for the backside. There we go. Oh, Kaiser Blades yeah. chunking in everything. Fungals go on top of the Ultras, but they are Berserk, so who cares? They're not going to stand in place. Frenzied, excuse me. Not Berserk. But still, uh, the Banelings crash in. Violet's going to tap out. Jigua takes the first game. It is best of five.